In this video, we'll be looking at how we can create slides from scratch by importing text into them and then designing all of our slides in ProPresenter without having to make images somewhere else. Let's get started. So once we're in ProPresenter, what we'll do is we want to bring in text and create some slides. So this is a special request video that someone's asked for because they're having a few difficulties creating slides and they want to be able to create all of their slides in ProPresenter without having to do extra work in other programs first and create images, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at bringing in some text, in this case, the Apostles Creed, and how we can do that into our slide and then create our slides in ProPresenter. So there's a couple of ways we can bring in our text. For something like the Apostles' Creed, any of the methods work because it's not super long. So what I've done is I've gone and I've Googled Apostles' Creed and I'm just going to copy and go back into ProPresenter. I'm going to go File, Import and Text from Clipboard. Now, if you have the Apostles' Creed in a Word document, you could go File, Import as a file, so a Word document. Or if you have it in a PowerPoint, you could import the PowerPoint, but I don't. So I'm going to do text from clipboard because I've copied it to my clipboard. And I'm just going to turn this right up. Because what this does is it decides where it's going to create a new slide. So if I turn this right up, it put everything on one slide for me. And then we can work from there. And we're just going to put it in our default library and we don't want it in a playlist. Hit import. And there it is. Now we do have a couple of issues with this. If I go into edit and I look at this, I can actually tell naturally that it's not all there and I can't see it all, which is perfectly okay. Because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight over here to the right hand side, go text, and I'm going to choose my scaling. And I'm just going to scale it to fit container to text. No, that's the wrong one. I want to scale text up or down to fit my container. So what that means is when I change the size of my text box, my text also changes. So it's always all going to be there, no matter how big my text box is, which is a handy feature. Now, the other way we can import text into slides is simply by creating a new slide. You automatically get a text box and I can just paste, so I'm pressing Control V, into here. Again, it doesn't quite fit. So I go text, no text scaling, scale text up or down to fit. Now this one is formatted, formatted a little bit nicer because that's how it was on my website in paragraphs. Whereas the other method just brings it all in one go because I didn't choose to split it up. However, remember, if I wanted this across a couple of slides, I can go into reflow and I can choose where I want to split it up. So I might choose to have a title of the Apostles' Creed and then I want a new slide and I just click Insert Slide Break. Then I might choose to come down here and click Insert a Slide Break. Then I'm going to come down to After Dead, click Insert a Slide Break. And you'll notice I've actually split this top one up into four slides exactly the same as this bottom one is split up into paragraphs. So that's there for you as well. But you'll notice now, because all of our text was scaled, we have the same size text box on all of our slides, but our text is shorter and longer, so it's all different sizes. So let's go back to edit, and let's get this right first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go no text scaling, and we're going to just find a size that works well. So if I just had this on it, I might want to pick... Let's go with 120. And so it depends on your screen and where you're showing it, but find a number that works right for you. So that could be 120 for our title. Now in here, here, and here, we probably want them the same size. So I'm gonna work off the biggest one here. I'm gonna get rid of my text scaling, and I'm just gonna bring it up and go, okay, 60 looks pretty good. Put it in the middle. Then all I'm going to do is if I'm happy with my text sizes, I'm going to go copy style, which takes all of this information. And I'm going to go to my other slide. I'm going to click my text box and I'm going to paste my text style. 
And so that gives it the exact same font, size, bold, color, everything as my other one. And I'm also going to do it here. So text box, paste style, and now they're all the same size. Now you might not want to split your slides up like this because there's a tiny little bit, a lot, and then a medium bit, but that is okay. Just find something that looks about right to you. Or you could have it in one go here. Now you can, of course, change a few things. So if I go no text scaling, and I bring this down so it fits, and I might want it across my whole screen, like so, but I might want just this part here bigger. So we might want to just make that title a bit bigger. And there's our Apostles Creed on one page. So that's the start of it. Now, depending on what you want for your slide is depending on what we do for the rest. So think about what you're displaying first and then how we can des design our slide. Now, if we're just doing in ProPresenter, we're limited to things like colors, shapes, letters, text, etc. If we want to bring in some background and some media, or an image or something, we can do that. And that's fairly straightforward, but let's just play around in here first. So in here, I could do shapes. So I could do something where I decide to do, oh, well, let's do it in the middle. If I wanted to do a few different colored rectangles, so I might do something like this, and then I can slide my rectangle to the middle. I'm gonna click and drag my rectangle and bring it underneath my text so my text is on top and so what I can do here is I can choose to have a background to my slide and I might choose to make it gray and then I can choose this shape and then I can choose the color of my shape by going to shape color now I'm not a graphic designer by any nature but it just gives you an idea of what you could do there so you could just use a simple rectangle to sort of highlight. I don't personally really love this, but it gives you an idea. If I go back into shape here, now there's a couple other cool features. Instead of having a rectangle, so let's get rid of our rectangle and we've lost our text, but that's purely because it's white as well. We could come down and we could do something like a custom. And so, Let's just have a play here. We could do, and this is not going to look great either. Something like that. And there's our custom shape or line. Now, I don't love that either. But it allows you to do a few different things. So let's get rid of that. And if we go into shape, we might want to choose, let's try a polygon. And so we could change the number of sides. So we could do something like this, where we keep it square. Now, just a little tip here. When I say keep it square, I'm just going to find the middle there. If I just click and drag this corner, you'll see how it goes out of proportion. However, if I hold down shift and drag it out, it'll keep it proportional to itself. So we'll keep it as a nice big square. <coughs> and so what we could do is something like this. And then we bring our polygon under our text and there's our Apostles Creed. Now remember you've got your lines that line up everything. So there's the middle and the middle is there. And so yellow is the middle and middle to the page. <coughs> And then for our shape, we're looking for yellow and yellow. So that looks pretty good. So you could do something like that. That's a little bit different as well. Um, th so that's another design you could do. If you wanted to, let's get rid of our background for now. So that would just show up as a nice blue <coughs> um, polygon. It's a very big sided polygon. So 20 sides to that polygon. If you wanted to do something different, we could go and find an image. So let's go find an image. Um, one of my personal favorites is pexels.com. 
And we might want to say we want something about the Bible. So let's see if we can find a nice background image. We could do something like that. Might work all right. So I'm just downloading it. Pexels is a free resource you can use. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that into ProPresenter. So here's my downloads folder on my computer. Here's the image I've just downloaded. And I'm just going to pull that into my slide. And there it is there. Now you'll notice that this image is very, very big. So if I just keep pulling it, what I'm looking for is the corner. I'm just going to make it a bit smaller as we go. So click and drag, bring it back up. You can also do this manually up in your settings on the right. But we'll just keep dragging it down and see where we end up until it's going to fit. So I'm going to put it up here. And I like to just overlap the edges of my image with my slide a little bit because then I know when it presents, I won't end up with any black borders. So that could be my slide background. And then I click and slide my image to the background. And I have my text on top. However, I can't see it. So we might go something like that. It's black, which is all right. We can sort of see that. I can just go <laughs> choose my image, copy it. I'm going to come into here and I'm going to paste it on this slide. Click and drag underneath. And I'm going to do the same up here. Paste it here. Click and drag underneath. And same here so that we have our text. Now remember, once we get one right here and we like the look of it, we can add the same thing to all the other slides. So let's have a look here. If I do something like fit container to text, I can then also try and add a bit of a background to this. So if I go to shape, you'll notice opacity gets rid of my text, but I might want to fill it. And so what I can do, just to make it easy to read, I could do like a gray, or I could come in and do like an off-whitey sort of color, or something like that. So that's a little bit easy to read. If I wanted to put that across all my slides, I just go copy style up here. There's my text, paste style. I'm then going to have to come into my shape and do the fill if I want my fill. So I could come into here, text, paste style, shape. I might want to do a fill and we might choose this color or we might go down a color or down another color. We can, of course, go advanced. Now, what this allows you to do is to pick your color when you're happy. But even putting a white background on it looks a little bit better. It's just to try and get it to pop off the page a little bit. You can, of course, do all of these other things up here as well. Um, so you can do like a rotate, a slide, stroke. So just have a play around except it's in white. So that's like a border, the shadow to your box, feathering. So that's like a fade around the edges. And of course your visibility when you want it to show or not. But you just want to try and get it what looks good to you. So that's simply just black text on a background where we've chosen an image off the internet and brought it in. In here, we can also pull up some other things so we can add different shapes. Um, it just really depends what you want for your slides. But that's just a quick and easy example of what you can do with your slides and how you can design them quickly and easily. The only tips I would give you is that over here, just remember the order of things. So if you lose something, like here, it's probably because it's on top. You can lock things. So they can't be moved around anymore. And you can make them invisible, but they're still there. You just need to click them to show them again, just in case you have people moving things or changing things. Um, but that order is the most important. And then remember, if you can't see something, it might be because it's like this, 
where everything's the same color. So just double check your colors are different based on your object that you selected down here. But that's how to quickly and easily create some slides. If you've got more questions or have some more ideas that you'd like to know about, let me know in the comments and I will try and make you some more videos. Thanks guys.